<laughs> okay, guys, I'm psyching myself out because today is gonna suck. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, so today we're gonna do a lot of work. We're gonna build a cowling for Scrappy, and I wanna describe something, because there'll be a lot of people asking this question. There's a lot of ways to make a cowling for an aircraft. Sometimes, like on Draco, I actually splashed a part off a of turbulence, my race plane, adapted it by flexing it and making it work for Draco. Other times, I've taken a cowling off a completely unrelated plane, cut it up, and used bits and pieces of multiple cowlings to make a cowling for one of my race planes. But ultimately, sometimes the easiest way is just to 3D scan the plane and then on the computer draft it and then machine out a mold. And if you're doing mass production, that works great. However, I've tried that a couple of times and you lose the ability to really see in the computer what it's gonna look like in real life. For example, I could draw something in the computer, make a mold, pull the part off, put it on the plane, and then go, oh my gosh, that transition looks horrible. There's something about seeing it in real life. Even today, when people are designing cars, they'll draw it in a computer, they'll actually draw it by pencil, put it in a computer, make a mold, but then they'll start with a giant block of clay or something that's almost exactly what they drew on the computer or exactly what they drew. And then they'll say, you know what? The lines from this side look like crap. And they'll add clay, they'll shave it off, they'll trim it. And ultimately they have to do the artistic side, I guess, of the design to meet the mechanical side that the computer showed them where exhaust pipes and things were, and then blend the two. Then they can 3D scan that and make the ultimate car or the ultimate cowling. So on Scrappy, I have some unique challenges. The aircraft bows this direction, but at the front, it actually curves from outward and then it returns back. It's a nice shape, I like. <laughs> anyway, it goes from the outside and it curves back because it comes down to the belly and at the front, it's kind of a double bend. And I was playing with it and there's just no way I feel comfortable trying to do that on a computer and have the lines work right. So we're gonna make a big, giant mess. On Scrappy, we are going to use foam and cardboard, and who knows, there might be some Coke cans, I don't know what. We're gonna use whatever it takes to kind of make a shape, foam it out, sand it and block it. I'm gonna cut up a carbon fiber cowling, use bits and pieces of it, but I need to make great big intakes. I need to make a bigger cowling, and I need it to blend to a shape I have done so this is old school, sanding, blocking, and uh, at the end of the day, we'll have what I want, and if I don't like it, I'll add a little more, sand a little more, and then pull a part off of that. So that's the plan. We're gonna make a big giant mess. Hope it turns out. Big giant intake on it um, for the cooling the eight cylinders. Wish me luck. You know the drill, let's get to work. So I've got this interesting transition that's gotta come from the spinner I got to make an air box, air filter. This is just for uh, um, the test runs. I'm going to do something a little different. Um, this intake scoop, and it's got to come down, and then I got to transition to the extra low part of the belly that I lowered to put the extra um, storage all the way down the aircraft, kind of my built-in belly pod. So I think I'm going to kind of round this up, and I'm really excited about it because I'm going to put a great big giant light in here. And if I can make it fit, I may go ahead and do some pointing out to the sides to get really bright light to the edges of the runway and out in front in case I'm in the backcountry. So um, we'll see if that fits, but I'm gonna start on the lower and then transition up. It's gonna be a lot of work, but that's what makes it fun. Let's get back at it. Hey guys, all right, so I'm now starting on the cowling, which makes me really excited. And to start, I have to make sure that the 
cowling, the engine, when it moves, won't hit the side of the cowling. So though this is starting to look like the shape of a cowling and it's gonna be pretty close, um, this is actually just a piece of half inch house insulation foam. And I use it because this foil side carbon doesn't stick to, but the half inch part is because I'm actually pushing it until it touches the engine and pulling it tight so that I have the minimum clearance I need around the engine for movement. So I know that once I wrap the entire engine with this foam and make it tight, I can actually build outward from there, whether it's more foam, expandable foam, sheet metal, pieces of a carbon cub cowling, and I can put it anywhere I want to start making a plug or a mold in place. But anytime I sand or get to this foil, I can't go any further or the cowling will be too small and I won't have the clearance. So it's a little trick I learned. Wrap the whole engine in this, then build outward for your cowling. And it should work great. I'm super pumped. Let's get to work. All right, guys. So I'm super excited to finally put this on. We made this a little while back, machined this. On the front side, we used it as a part to make this carbon fiber. So it was a mold and an offset jig to place the front of the cowling. So it's two parts in one. You can see we already made the carbon fiber ring for the front of the cowling. That is carbon fiber then Kevlar and carbon together because these tend to crack right around the front of the cowling. So this is extremely strong. Once I got that made, now I use the same part and all this back machining was so that I could take off the prop spinner plate. This holds the carbon fiber cone, set that aside. And all these offsets are so that when I bolt this there, this location of carbon fiber will connect and become the cowling and it's offset so that the face of this is an eighth inch away from the back of that spinner plate. So we drew it on the computer to make sure it was right, but I've got a, a uh, aluminum block I'm gonna put on here and bolt it. That'll keep it from moving, bolt it tight, and then I can connect carbon to this. And when it's all done, I made it so I can leave this bolted, pull out the Clacos, and take the cowling and drag it off the front and then split it, part it, do everything I need to afterwards. So that was a lot of work, but I'm super excited. It's the fastest way I know how to get a perfectly true marriage of the spinner to a one-off cowling is to do something like that. So let's get to work. Okay guys, I'm psyching myself out because today is gonna suck. So, uh, I'm ready for it. So I got my fan set up here. I got a fan set up back there. We're gonna blow all the air this way. I'm gonna open the front door. I've got the plane prepped. Last night we stayed up late and we made a great big mess. So today I get to sand and be <laughs> like, Instead of Mike, it'll be like Michelangelo, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna try and custom shape the front of the cowling. I started with a Cup Crafters front end. I love the look of the hips and the shape on a carbon cub 
I was able to take, well, there's the carbon cup front end. And of course, Scrappy is a much wider cub. And so I just split it in the middle, opened it up, re-arced it. I had to re-arc the front up here because the spinner on a cub is roughly 12 inches and this is 16 inches for my prop. So I've reshaped it all. But all this white micro is a lot of weight. So I have to get rid of all of it. The way I've made this, and I've done it so many times, is first I made a, the attachment carbon fiber that it hooks to the airframe. I made that way back when I made the entire fuselage and it's already trimmed and fitted and has all the attach points. So I had that made, I had this made and I needed to blend the metal. The way I did that is I made kind of an internal skeleton with a whole bunch of aluminum yardsticks because they flex really well and I can make arcs to the sticks. And I made kind of a, it, an exoskeleton or internal skeleton, wrapped it with scrap junk carbon fiber I had around and just got it ballpark shape. And then I just covered it with buckets of mixed micro, which is really hard to sand, but perfect for what I'm doing. And I'm gonna sand for like eight hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> and Ron's laughing because he's seen me do this so many times. And I think, I'm not sure, but Ron, <laughs> I think Ron pretends he can't do straight level. <laughs> he has no artistic ability. So over all the years, he just knows when it comes to hand shaping a cowling, he's like, I'm he's out. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. See ya. He sets up all the files, the, the stuff, puts out the sandpaper, the big blocks. He gets everything ready for him and he's like, good luck. <laughs> See ya. See you tomorrow. See you tonight. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let me kind of quickly go through it. I got to sand all this down. It's really thick, really high. Work it, put the curve into it. I got a double bump to match the metal. It's very slow. I only want to do it once. Once it's done, I'm going to lay up three layers of carbon fiber all over the whole thing let it dry and then tomorrow i get to spend all day sanding again because i'll detach it when it's dry flip it over take out all the foam aluminum sticks the skeleton the scrap carbon fiber junk that's in there and i'm going to take it all out and then sand from the back side and what's left of the micro that made the shape i have to get all of it out or i just have a lot of weight so i'm going to sand back and find the new final shape and at that point i can bag vacuum bag three more layers to the back side and get it really tight and really firm and now i have a one-off cowling uh the other thing i could do if i was making production i'd still do it this way but then i could take a finished cowling remake make a reverse plug and in the future you could mass produce just off of using what i make today but for a one-off it's hand shape and lots of sweat. <laughs> Four hours from now, I'll be up here. I'll be sweating like a stuck pig and hating it. But I'm geared up. It's like my ma my marathon. I got several days of it. Let's get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, buddy. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Sand. I gotta sand, sanding again, and I'm gonna sand, and then sand. My arms are on fire. They're gonna fall off. They're burning to the ground. Ah. <laughs> Not my Diet Coke. I spilled it. <laughs> That's the most awful thing that could happen. <laughs> um, all right. My dog's going nuts. I better take him potty. Um, <laughs> uh, 
maybe an hour and a half to our tops. And I'll be ready to lay up carbon fiber on the top. Then I think I got plenty of time left in the day. So I'll put some heat laps on it. I'm going to get it to flash. I was going to do grinding out all the backside tomorrow, but bag it. Let's do it tonight and get it over with. So it's going to be a late night, but uh, a couple more Diet Cokes. About to work. <laughs> all right, guys. Super pumped. We got the top side all sanded out. It looks like a mess, but it's come together really, really well. I couldn't be happier. I widened it right here so I could fit the 780. Um, these are Cub Crafter humps, but I had to re-arc the top because I opened it up. This side and this side, the air intake, you can't see the seam. I've already closed it out here, but I opened the air intake this way. I also took these humps, which is why you see a seam here, and I raised them almost two inches up. That way the air coming in gives me another couple inches over the top of the cylinders to help cool the backside. So these came up, they went wider, and they're also going lower. You see a Cub Crafters cowling would end right there at that line. So I've stretched it. And then all this right here is also the extra that was already on scrappy. I made that way earlier that's already paired to the aircraft. If I spin it around, you can kind of get an idea of how much bigger this is growing through here, how much more air is coming in the bottom of the engine as well. If I spin it the rest of the way, you can see a really disgusting mess, but that's okay. This is where I put all the yard sticks, rulers, chunks of wood, but you can see the, the width of the cowling where it grew here. You can see this stretch right there. Um, Anyway, I'm getting a lot closer. If you look down inside, you can see the 16 inch spinner. This is the spinner I made earlier on my mold. This jig, this wood jig is what I bolt it to the aircraft so it holds everything straight. You can see the bigger air inlets here. Anyway, I know it looks like a mess, but we're getting closer. I'm only on day two. When I get this all connected, Everything paired up, the new bottom, stretch the bottom, reshape the bottom. I'm doing my air intake and filter totally different. So the whole bottom part of the cowling is going to be completely different from a carbon cup other than the uh, outlet air, which I really like. And they match the back of the oil air outlet. I'm super excited. It's going really, really well. Once I get it all carboned on the outside, all of this mess comes out, we grind it all out, sand it, go back and find the new carbon, and then lay up to that. So all this stuff you see in here disappears. So that's how we're doing it. You can see my nice little template, bolts right back on the plane. So I'm gonna get back at it, we got a lot to do. You know the drill, let's get back to work. Not exactly sure all the parts we're gonna make out of this, but it's pretty cool. Just make your own carbon fiber sheet, save some money. Let's cut it up, get back to work. One step closer, this came out of the big giant 10 foot sheet Ron and I made. And uh, we've just trimmed it, but if you want to come take a close look, you can see we've stepped it and that's already perfectly flush. And this is how much the cowling's enlarged and the inlet air side in width this way and height, I guess would be that way. And uh, we'll carry this back, and then this is now getting ready to carry the back half of the cowling all the way around. So we're getting closer. Couldn't be happier. Let's get the other side done and glue it up. All right, guys. <laughs> it's nice to be able to just lower the plane down to work on it. So um, I'm getting closer. The top shape is getting really close. The bottom's coming together, the original. Cub Crafters uh, exit gills right here. This part <laughs> was really tough to make, but it's come together really good. And what made it hard is I've got a concave on one side and convex on the other. So I've got a transition from one kind of arc to another and then blend it down into the pipes and under the belly of the plane. So um, it's getting there. I, I'm really liking the shape. I think it's gonna turn out really cool. It's really thick. Um, of course, it's a tight fit to get that motor in there, but we got a lot more to do. The other side's not done. <laughs> Let's get back to work. 
All right, guys, we're getting a lot closer. This is the downspouts for the exhaust pipes, but I've got a lot of sanding to do. I'm gonna go ahead and sand and shape this all out. Right now, this is just making a mold. So this, I made it out of cardboard, duct tape, foam, sanding, and then I just kind of spread a really dry micro all over it. Now I'll sand it out, wax it, all of this, I don't want any of this weight and micro filler in the final product. I want a really lightweight cowling. So once I get this all shaped, I'll wax it, put several layers of carbon fiber on it and pull the part from it and then put the attached points to rehook it to the front of the aircraft. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to get the release to work the way I want it. I'm gonna just use some cheap rattle can clear coat enamel, some clear packing tape and a wax. And what I'm gonna do, I've already done one. I've clear coated all of this area. And this is just a mold. All this will throw away, but it's got the contour I want. So what I've done is I've clear coated it and it's just starting to dry up. When it finishes drying, I'm gonna then take this clear tape and I'll stick it to it. The reason why I clear coated it first is the tape will stick. If you just try and stick the tape to raw carbon, sometimes it starts to come off, especially on sharp corners. So once you clear coat it, the tape will stick really well. And I'll tape all the big flat areas. When I get down into these contours right here, I'll go ahead and just use a Loctite release. It's like a wax release. Brush it on, let it dry, brush it on, let it dry. Do it like six, seven steps. I actually speed it up with just a little blow dryer, kind of get it to evaporate quicker and leave the wax residue behind. So here's the process. I'll get those all applied and then I'll make a part on this whole lower cowling area, pop that off, and then I can make other parts and then start reconnecting them to the flange that's already finished on the firewall. So I'm pumped. We've got a lot of work to do, but my shape is essentially done. <laughs> Let's make some parts. Last Clico, Clico, Clico <laughs> is installed. Um, man, I am really happy. Extremely lightweight. This is uh, currently only three layers in the field, six in all the corners. Um, you can see the exhaust pipe sticking out. You can see the clearance in here. It's exactly what I wanted by wrapping the engine in foam. So I've had this off and back on. Now this is drying in place and I can still pull the entire cowling off straight off the front without a seam in it at all. Obviously I'll split it because I wouldn't want to have to pull the prop to get the cowling off later, but I'm super pumped. We're officially getting really close with the cowling, the completion of the mold to make a cowling. While this is drying, I'm gonna pop the front wood off, shape the inlets, and get that new bigger air inlet that I've sized to match the eight cylinder engine. <sighs> One part down, a zillion more to go. Back to work. <sighs> All right, 90% done painting it white with micro. <laughs> All right, so here's what I've got. The cowling is now, for the most part, the whole thing is now done with three layers of carbon other than a bunch of overlapping areas, which will have four to six layers. Um, then there's a couple of primary components. Right now, they're all connected. So if those points are a little bit thicker where they're, they're overlap, but 90% three layers thick. It's now one part. You kind of see around the front here, I've got to do just a little bit more, but basically I've basted the whole cowling and I'm spreading on about an eighth of an inch thick of micro. And then I'm gonna sand 90 plus percent of that off. What that's gonna do is take care of any little highs and lows between carbon layers. It's like doing the body work, pre-body work early, but almost all this micro will disappear and get perfectly true then I'm gonna put one layer on the entire outside of this is one giant cowling, not separated. That takes us to four. Then I pull it off the plane, grind all the transitions of overlapping pieces out of it so that there's no overlap that's really thick. And then I lay one more layer on the inside, taking us to five layers thick with trace micro in highs and lows. It's gonna make a really strong cowling, really lightweight. This took a while, <laughs> but it's about done. A few more hours, we'll wrap it up, get out of here, sand it tomorrow, carbon it. We got a lot to do, let's get back to work.
All right, guys, I've been sanding and sanding and sanding for hours. I'm gonna take a quick break, go hit a movie with my beautiful wife that's holding the camera right there. When I'm done, we'll get right back to work. But let me kind of show you where we're at so far. Some of these parts are permanent parts that will stay on the plane. Others, I'm just finishing it together and I'll splash a mold off it and get a fresh part with no micro on it at all. But like this bottom part is a part I made earlier, made a mold. I already splashed off of it an actual part, but I've blended it all together with micro as I make the other molds so that I can sand them perfectly smooth together. I can separate and reconnect parts that are molds and parts that are finished to a finished cowling and get it really, really lightweight. When it's all done, I could actually splash a fresh mold off of that and even get a little bit lighter. But so far I've been pulling molds as I go piece by piece. This, as it stands right now, is one giant part, um, but I'll pair it out and put it back together. So it might be a little bit confusing, but uh, you can see a lot of micro still to go. I got lots and lots of sanding left. When I'm done, there'll just be tiny, tiny traces of the micro filler. Then I can go ahead and wax and splash a part off of that. Um, we got lots of work to do, but first, some time with my wife, my family, and then you guys know the drill. Then we'll get back to work. Ooh, I can stop holding my breath. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> what uh, you doing? <laughs> this is my day at the gym. How to keep your heart rate at 150 for eight hours straight. <laughs> <Back away. laughs> so I'm gonna sand. I gotta sand. Sanding again. And I'm gonna sand. Look at him he keeps going and going. How you doing there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I like it when you come over um, and it's keeps to breathe. Oh, no. Get back to work. Get back to work. Okay, guys, here's a little trick. If you're getting ready to lay up carbon over another part and you don't want to lose your marker holes where you put your clicos to attach. For me, it's the exit grill. It's real simple. Just use a little torque. paint and then when you put it on you can follow the hole and just cover it like that we'll let that dry for a little bit now I'll take the razor blade and just cut the excess of torques that's coming through then when I carbon this and put its layer on I can go to the back side and see the bright orange and re-drill the hole in the exact spot so it's a simple trick but it saves a lot of hassle later all right, guys, calling it a night. <laughs> Ron and I finished putting the last layer of carbon fiber on the entire exterior of the mold. So at this point, I've just got a couple little pieces of fill ply to put on. And the next step will be pulling it all off, sanding it one last time. And then we can actually start pulling parts off it with no micro, no filler at all. I'm actually going to pull apart off the entire top of this before I pull it off the plane for specifically for the pressurized plenum that sits on top of the engine. So it can chase every double bump contour, three bumps on top, contour of the top of the cowling. The pressurized plenum, I want to sit up almost three quarters of an inch away and give me every bit of air volume to the back cylinders on the pressurized plenum. So we'll make that uh, tomorrow. Make a few more parts, pop this off. If you were wondering how long it took just to put one layer of finished carbon fiber over the entire mold of the cowling, one layer, about five hours. And that was without stopping. So uh, the top of it, we have to always pay attention when we're doing this much carbon at once, that's a wet layup. We turned down the temperature, made it nice and cold in here. But by the time we got done, the top is starting to harden up. So we kind of worked one way and kept coming all the way around. So we we're always working with wet carbon to wet carbon. So uh, let's get some sleep. Then you know the drill. We'll get back to work.
I am so happy. 